Good day, good day, everyone. This is Charles with the Exodus Logistics Learning Center, uh, America's number one dispatcher and freight broker training for beginners. Uh, today, we're going to have a video about our new um, FAQs page under the Dispatcher 101 uh, section. We'll come out with an FAQ section later um, under the Freight Broker 101, but now we want to cover the Dispatcher 101. So sharing my screen, as you can see, um, I'm just going to do a high-level overview just to show you what it is, and this will be on the YouTube channel and as well as other social media outlets. Um, so under, we have different tabs, different pages. So we have a general tab, FAQs about the general uh, dispatch 101, some common questions that may be asked, um, Zoom, seminar trainings, training materials only, the ongoing training. Once you purchase the ongoing training, how to set up your email and login, and questions about the members portal access page where you actually go in and access all the resources. So let's go back to the general page. So questions like, what is an independent dispatcher? So I'm not, I'm not going to go into every question and answer. You can do that on the site, on the page, I should say, just giving you a high level overview of what it is. For those of you who are not members who happen to see a YouTube video, you may have getting, gotten a notification of a posting of this YouTube video later on. So what is an independent freight dispatcher? Uh, you mentioned independent dispatchers. Are there other types? Yes, there are. We go into that. What's the difference between the dispatcher and the freight broker? That's a common question. Okay. Do you need an MC number or a DOT number to be a freight dispatcher? That's a common question. It's a general question as well. Um, do you need a business license, um, LLC, EIN, whatever legal structure, et cetera, to be an independent freight dispatcher? So you check the answers out to the end. And to check the answers out, you just either hit the drop down or you just click on the, the, the question and it drops down and opens back up. Same over here, okay? What kind of name should I consider for my independent dispatching company? That's a good question. Can you dispatch and bring in revenue before you get your business set up? People have asked me that question, so I figured I'd put it up there. Can you dispatch carriers while learning how to be a dispatcher at the same time? So while you're educating yourself, let's say in our training or in any training, can you also be dispatching at the same time? And we've kind of answered that um, for you. How long does it take on average to start seeing income from dispatching? That's a very good question because people want to know before they decide to consider this as a training or as a career or as a business, right? Um, is the Dispatcher 101 ongoing training course, ongoing course also considered a self-paced training course? Um, and is being an independent freight dispatcher illegal? Now, I, I answered this one very thoroughly, broke it down and everything. So that one's a good one because that's a very good question. So we went into detail about that a little bit more, okay? So that's all under the general page. Under the Zoom page, when people are trying to get into our live Zoom trainings, I've never used Zoom before. What is Zoom? Okay, that's, that's probably the first obvious question that would be asked for someone who hasn't um, used the internet or used Zoom and don't know what the Zoom platform is, things like that. Can I log into, can I log into Dispatch 101 Zoom meetings without being an ongoing member and or having members portal access? Well, yes, you can. So. But, but we answer the question for you. What is the meeting ID and passcode used for in Zoom? Very good question. Um, what does the error message, this meeting is for authorized attendees only mean? That error message pops up a lot. So we figure we will um, try to answer the question uh, as best we can. Um, do you offer Dispatch your one-on-one -on -one live Zoom trainings. Well, of course we do. We do it three days a week and we put the times in there and I'm gonna highlight that so that it'll stick out, okay? How often are the Dispatch your one-on-one -on -one live trainings? Well, we kinda answered it in two questions. Do you offer them and it's so how, how often, right? And when are the days and times of the Dispatch your one-on-one -on -one live training? So all three of these questions are kinda like similar, right? Um, so the next, link or page, subpage under the frequently asked questions have to do with the Dispatcher 101 seminar training. People who sign up for the seminar training, what is the cost? 
for the dispatcher one-on-one seminar training. How do I register for the training? What day and time are seminar trainings held? So these are good questions. What is all included in the seminar training? And we gave a listing of that, okay? That's what you will receive in your email. When you purchase the training, you'll get an email with a PDF or a download to have your kit materials, starter kit materials. Um, if I want to continue with the ongoing training, will the seminar cost I pay be deducted? Right. We talk about that with the voucher. You know, we do have a voucher for that. OK, so next now is the training materials kit. So someone who may not need live training or ongoing training, they just want to purchase the materials and decided just to get the materials, the templates for their company to kind of give them a kickstart into the business of dispatch, freight dispatching. So uh, what is the cost of the training materials kit only? How do I purchase the training materials kit? Okay, I will show you there. What is all included in the training materials, uh, in the training kit? Good questions, right? Do I get access to the member's portal with the purchase of the training materials? Well, obviously you do not, but I'll, you know, we can answer that question. Do I get access to the live trainings with the purchase of the training materials? Obviously you do not, it's not. You know, so the members portal and the live trainings, that's a part of the ongoing training. It's not part of the uh, training materials kit. And we, we answer that in the FAQ, obviously. If I want to continue with the dispatcher one-on-one -on -one ongoing training, will the training material cost I paid be deducted? Yes, you have a, you can claim a voucher. So you could claim a voucher, you can submit for a voucher. Um, by either registering for and attending a seminar or purchasing the materials. Now you have to have done that and we check. So when people submit for vouchers and they have not done it, we cross-reference the email and the name. And if you have not taken a seminar or at least registered and paid for one, you may not have taken it, but at least paid for it and then purchased the materials, we will send you an email letting you know like, hey, you have to have done one of these two things prior to being able to use that voucher towards the cost of the ongoing training, okay? Um, speaking of which, ongoing training page. How much is the Dispatcher 101 ongoing course? How long are the classes per each Zoom session? And how long is the ongoing training overall? That's a very good question because people want to know how long is this? Um, how will the, the self-paced portion of the ongoing course be accessed? What all comes with the online training? Do you offer a certificate of on completion? So those are common questions. Next, we do the email sign up. This has to have to do um, the next two pages, the email login and sign up and the members portal access is relates to after you have enrolled in the ongoing training. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, so with the email, what is the email log up, uh, email login setup page, step one, page four, what's it for, right? What is the process of setting up my email and password for approval? Can I use a different email other than the one I enrolled with? How long does it take to get approved? And these are good questions actually, because I get them a lot. So I say, well, let me create an FAQ to kind of like steer people to the site so we can get those questions answered. And then as more commonly asked questions come in, we will categorize them according, accordingly and put them in the FAQ also to kind of help keep everything streamlined for you guys. Do I receive some type of confirmation email saying I have been approved? How do I confirm my email after approval? Good questions. What happens when I click the link in the email to go to the member's portal access page and nothing happens? How do I get to the member's portal access page? Very good questions uh, because that has happened and we have uh, worked around it, so I provide the answer in the FAQ. Um, and then last but not least, under Dispatcher 101, obviously, is the member portal access page itself. What is the member portal access step two um, page? So the reason why I say step one and step two, because that's what it says here on the, on the site. Because step one, when, you, when you're enrolled in an ongoing course, the next step, step one is to set up your email and password for approval. And then step two is to actually access the portal, OK? So that's why I list it like that. So I'm trying to make it as user friendly as possible, right? So um, what is the members portal access page? 
How do I get to the member's portal access page after email and password approval? Very good question. How can I access member's portal access page? Okay. What is all included in the member's portal access page? Okay. So, um, how I should say, how do I, how do I maintain having access to the member's portal access page? How do you keep keep on going? How much is the monthly subscription fee? What happens if I cancel my monthly subscription and membership? And then what happens if I cancel my monthly subscription and membership and then decide I want back in? What happens there? So those are very good questions. So I'll change this one, correct that one, and correct this one um, in a second. But, but, but the point is the FAQs are here to provide try to provide answers to the commonly asked questions because I get a lot of calls, a lot of emails about it. So I say, let me, let me centralize the answers in the form of an FAQ. I've also created a knowledge base page, but I've hidden the page on the live portion of the website until the page is complete. I had it up there live with no data, no information, no content in it. And people were asking about what's this page? It's KB, knowledge base. So I took it down or, or I hid it, I should say. And that's, that'll come later on with some just some general standard knowledge for basic level dispatch um, members, okay? But here is the Dispatcher 101 um, FAQ. This will be on, on YouTube and all the other social media um, outlets. If you have some common questions that are outside of what we try to answer here that you feel are common that someone others can benefit from, um, please um, email them to us contact us, the, our, our information will be in the description of the YouTube video, all the information, the phone numbers, the links and everything, emails. So yeah, send, send your FAQs and we will add them to the FAQ page because it benefits not just you, but others, right? Who may have common questions as well. So, um, so there you have it guys. Um, this will be up shortly. Um, and I will see you and talk to you later. Today is, we have, today is the 8th of January. We have training today at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. So I'll see you guys who are members in the training. Thank you.